Good Sunday morning, Northeast Ohio. As we close out the month of January, we do so with the government back open for business after last week's shutdown. The temporary spending plan made possible with Democrat support keeps the government open until February 8th, extends the Children's Health Insurance Program for six years, and comes with a promise from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell to negotiate a solution to DACA. I asked Sherrod Brown if following through on that promise is a concern. Of course I'm concerned. Mitch McConnell doesn't always live up to his commitments. But I, I didn't see any other path here because they clearly were Republican leadership was dug in. They won the election. They have a majority in both houses. They clearly don't care about these dreamers, these kids that are doing the right thing and doing everything we ask of them. It's I think it's morally outrageous. But I also am a realist and see that they were going to do nothing. We got them at least to do something. We get a vote in the Senate. We pass it in the Senate. And then the pressure's on the House to do the right thing. And that's a major concern, getting anything that the Senate might agree on bipartisanly through the U.S. House. While well, bipartisanship was on display this week, as the findings of a new report came out on Thursday that looked at how drugs are being smuggled into the U.S., particularly fentanyl from China, not through some clandestine means, but literally through the U.S. Postal Service. It's shocking information, really, that this is so easy to, uh, to get online and then through the mail system. Uh, you can go online, apparently, and buy fentanyl like you would buy a pair of shoes, and it just shouldn't happen, and you shouldn't be able to have it come through our United States mail system. So we've got legislation to try to provide law enforcement with the tools they tell us they need to be able to stop this stuff from coming in through the mail. We've got to get that passed, and then we've got to redouble our efforts across the board. We've talked about this before, John, but we've got to do more on prevention uh, because the demand continues to be strong out there, get people into treatment who are addicted, but let's at least not have this easy access to these incredibly dangerous drugs. And the report also found that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are becoming the preferred payment method of drug traffickers. As we get together on these Sunday mornings, I realize very often I catch you either right before or right after church. Cleveland is home to some of the most magnificent churches in the state, many of them over a century old. For the better part of the last 14 years, I've had one literally right outside my window. I often find myself staring at it dating back to the glory days of Millionaire's Row. Come next month, it could be yours. They serve different functions now, the few homes that once were part of Millionaire's Row. Most that once lined Euclid Avenue, though, are long gone, demolished decades ago in the interest of progress. This one at 30th and Euclid, for example, now home to News 5. Across the street through it all, though, was First United Methodist. It was a church in form and function, yes, but it was built to reflect the standing of the churchgoers that filled the mansions that once stood around it. For over a century, it served its faithful, but in 2010 merged with the church and university circle and has been empty since 2014. After listing the property for sale, its owners have decided to put it up for auction. The starting bid is only 250000 This property was on the market for $1.9 million at one point. In addition to the late Gothic Revival Church, complete with magnificent stained glass windows and a one-of-a-kind pipe organ, the property also includes a school, parking lot, full kitchen. This could be used as a religious facility, a school property. It could be converted into an entertainment venue of sorts, whether it be a, a restaurant, nightclub, bar type situation. A lot of possibilities here. I love this building. I'm invested in it. Dr. Kenneth Chalker took over as pastor here in 1986 when it looked like the church was in its final days and rebuilt its congregation. We may look at this building and see stone, glass, and wood. He sees people. I'm invested in it because of the people that have gathered here. Remarkable people. That's why he'd like to see a dynamic use of the space that recognizes its place in Cleveland history and celebrates the spirit of those who built it. It's being done from a point of investment and encouragement and excitement about the future rather than a sense of despair that somehow the past is gone. And the auction itself will be held February 22nd. You can find the details about it on our News 5 app. Well, if you're going to be traveling around the queue over the next month or 18, you're going to be impacted by some traffic changes, especially on the Huron roadside as the queue transformation finally gets underway. When the Cavaliers open the 2019 season, what the team will look like is anybody's guess. What the arena will look like isn't. Fans entering the arena won't be waiting outside in lines, but rather inside, out of the weather, in a massive glass enclosed area, opening the arena walls to the city beyond. Work starts in less than two weeks. Monday, February 5th, you'll start to see the barriers erected for the uh, construction zone, and uh, work will start to begin. 
The construction zone will be mainly the Huron Road side of the building and will eat up three of the five lanes of traffic for the better part of the next 18 months. The CAS will pay for Cleveland police to monitor the remaining two lanes to determine when to have two-way traffic or two lanes going in or out depending on events, a move that should ease congestion. The difference between putting a traffic signal and a thinking, reasoning human being out there is to the traffic's lighter here, okay, pull this and make it move. Any mechanic will tell you it's a little tough to work on a moving car. That's why the Cleveland Gladiators will not play the next two seasons. So the arena can be shut down after the cast playoffs for the summer. It enables us to really focus construction during those times, even though construction will continue during the seasons, especially as it relates to the North Extension. And everything will be done for the start of the Cavs 2019 season. We have Democracy 2018. I'm John Kasich. Enjoy your Sunday.